Five weird engined cars they wouldn't make these days. What's up everybody? Despite the fact that modern cars have amazing power and performance, most of them now use turbocharged engines. For lovers of interesting, naturally aspirated and slightly quirky power plants, this can be a bit frustrating. The relentless quest for fuel economy and environmental standards has killed some of the most interesting engines ever. Here are five of my favorite weird engines they really wouldn't make these days. Number 1. The BMW M5 S85 V10 This strange engine code represents one of the best naturally aspirated engines BMW had ever produced. The 5-litre V10, which was installed in the 2005-2010 BMW E60 M5 and the E63 E64 M6. This V10 was one of those once-in-a-lifetime engines which combined BMW's racing heritage with the latest in engine technology. In those days, BMW was very active in Formula 1, so somebody in M Performance Department decided to transfer racing know-how into road-going super saloons. Despite being basically an M3 V8 engine with two extra cylinders, the result was the glorious 5-litre V10 with a high revving capacity and red line at 8250 RPM, which was insane in 2005 and still is today. The power output was equally impressive at 507 horsepower with 384 pound-foot of torque. With such firepower under the bonnet, the E60 M5 was easily the fastest sedan of its generation and a true modern classic. Unfortunately though, BMW decided to go with turbocharging for its successor and killed the V10 magic. But it won't be forgotten. Number 2. Audi RS6's 5-litre V10 Audi's lineup has always been full of unique engines, and one of the most interesting is the 2008-2011 5-litre turbo V10 unit. Producing 570 horsepower and 480 pound-foot of torque with a red line at 7500 RPM, the RS6 engine is really pretty cool. Like many of the great engines, it was built by hand and had specially issued parts and components to distinguish it from similar naturally aspirated engines in other Audis. The specifications, exotic materials, and enormous power suggest this was a supercar power plant, which essentially it was, being also used in the Lamborghini Gallardo as well. Despite the universal praise from the motoring press and unbelievable performance in the RS6 station wagon, Audi have decided to go with smaller and more conventional engines in the current models. Number 3. The Dodge Viper V10 The king of all naturally aspirated sports car engines is the mighty Viper V10. Conceived in the late 80s using basically a truck engine as a starting point, the Viper V10 has evolved into one of the most impressive power plants, not just for its sheer size, but also for its unbelievable power, torque, and smooth running. A lot of people make mistakes and claim that the Viper's engine is the same one you'll find in heavy-duty Ram trucks of the early 90s, but this isn't really true, to be honest. The Viper's V10 is made of aluminium and not cast iron, with a totally different bore and stroke as well as the rest of the engine's components. When it was introduced in 1992, it displaced 8.2 litres of pure American muscle, which delivered 400 horsepower and 464 pound-foot of torque, but soon after the power grew to 450 horsepower. The last Viper to be built had an 8.4 litre V10 engine with 640 horsepower, and the rumour was that the Fiat Chrysler Corporation deliberately kept the output low because Ferrari was afraid that the Viper could outperform anything coming from Maranello if the engine was given full power. We don't know if this is true, but it's just sad that Chrysler killed the Viper and its glorious V10 engine. Number 4. BMW 320SI N54B20S BMW was quite busy in the early 2000s when it came to racing. Formula 1, the GT Championship, and the ETCC series were all dominated by BMW racing teams. However, for the Touring Car Championship, BMW needed a homologation special. This bred the E90 320SI. Not many people know about this car, and from the outside it looked almost like any other E92 sedan, except for its special wheels. Under the hood, though, was a different story, hiding a 2-litre 4-cylinder engine that was pretty much a racing engine. 
For a start, BMW Germany never produced this engine, with the N54 B20S being assembled in the UK by a specialized engine shop which made Formula One engines. This meant that this engine was hand-built from the finest and most advanced materials at the time. Interestingly, the N54 B20S came without BMW's signature Valvetronic system, since it limited rev capacity of the unit. The result was 175 horsepower with 147 pound-foot of torque. The 320 Si came only as a six-speed manual, and even if the power figures don't sound special today, this car was the hidden gem of the BMW 3 Series range. These days, the 320 Si is supposed to be one of the best handling BMW models due to its low weight engine over the front wheels. Although, unfortunately, being British, the engines are not exactly reliable. Think catastrophic engine failures. Number 5. Audi's V12 TDI Most of the time, diesel engines are nothing to be excited about. Oil burners are usually a dependable and fuel-efficient choice for people who cover a lot of miles, but not really for car people. That being said, the thoroughbred V12 turbo diesel engine from Audi is something special. With 500 horsepower and an earth-moving 740 pound-foot of torque, this engine is definitely worth the attention. Having four times the amount of cylinders as a modern Super Mini, this enormous unit was not only immensely powerful, but physically large as well, meaning that back in 2008, it was only suited for Audi's biggest SUV model, the Q7 V12 TDI. Thanks to massive torque ratings, the 2.6-ton luxury SUV could accelerate from 0 to 60 in just 5.5 seconds, shaming most sports cars of the period. Unfortunately, Audi decided to retire this Goliath of an engine. Despite all the qualities, the Q7 V12 TDI was a very expensive ride, and after the infamous Volkswagen's Dieselgate scandal in America, the general automotive climate has changed towards hybrids and electric vehicles. So there you are. What other great engines would they really not make anymore? I must have missed some. Let me know in the comments, and as always, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It would be cool to reach 200k by the end of the year. Cheers!